G'day. Today I thought I'd touch on a, a news topic um, and a company called Arium has gone into voluntary administration this week. Uh, Australia wide there's uh, around 7,000 workers. South Australia's been particularly uh, hard hit um, in the town of Whaler. Now in South Australia itself they say there's around 1,600 uh, workers that their jobs are on the line and there's also contractors of you know close to the same amount again. Um, so it's not just the direct workers that are um, you know, jobs are on the line, it can be all these subcontractors as well, so very much thinking of, of these people, um, and that includes the, the One Steel franchise. So very mindful of you know, this, these businesses and uh, when they go under they affect a lot of people. They owe well over $4, million, $4 billion worth of debt, um, you know, mostly to the big four banks. They also owe, owe their suppliers probably around a billion dollars and, and a half a billion dollars in uh, entitlements to their workers. Um, so it's these debts that uh, I think get me thinking about uh, business in general. Unfortunately for the, the steel industry, they've been greatly affected by, I suppose, the globalization and as the world has got smaller that we have uh, steel coming in from you know many different countries, particularly China, um, where wages are possibly well less than half of what uh, our wages are here. You know, Australia's been extremely uncompetitive for a lot of years, and and Arium's uh, steel business has been losing money hand over fist for many years because um, we're just not as competitive as uh, as you know more. The, countries that are more developing uh, rather than the developed countries like we are where we're used to higher wages. Um, yeah, so that's having a, a globalisation is having a real effect on our manufacturing sector. But what it gets me thinking about is is debt and, uh, and probably just a note that we need to be extremely cautious about debt. Now it wasn't that long ago that um, you can go and borrow, borrow money and buy a house and you can borrow up to 95%. There's the potential sometimes when the first time buyers grants is around, well you, you were probably technically borrowing at least 100% of, the, of the, uh, the, the amount of the asset that you're buying. On margin lending, so that's where you, you use your current shareholdings as security. Um, depending on the stocks, you, you can borrow anywhere between 40% as my pen runs out up to probably around 75%. So be very cautious around debt. Um, and if we go back to the GFC, all the um, businesses that got themselves into strife, and I think of ABC Learning Centres for one, they went around Australia um, and globally buying up um, childcare centres. Um, and to do it so freely and, and to acquire so many businesses so quickly, they must have been overpaying, so they one, overpaying for an asset, and two, they were using leverage, they were using debt. So while debt seems uh, cheap, and it's still pretty easy at the moment, I do notice things are tightening up, but for my clients, I want everyone to be extremely wary of these you know, high um, your ratios. Um, bigger the deposit you've got, the better, um, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. One, you save a lot of interest, Two, you don't have to pay a lender's mortgage insurance if you're buying a home. And three, it just makes it safer. If you can keep uh, debt as low as possible, um, yeah, please do so. Uh, we've got a lot of calculators here. We're help, happy to complete some calculations for clients on how to uh, pay your home loans off quicker. Um, if you're interested in, uh, in uh, borrowing to invest, um, that's fine, but you've got to do it conservatively and safely and hopefully into the right assets. So thank you for listening. Um, there's lessons to be learnt in, uh, in all these types of um, things that happen around from an investment point of view and in the business sector. So we'll keep watching and, uh, and learning as we go. Thanks for listening.